What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another video. I wanna, I wanna just, oh, one of my notebooks. I wanna give Kanye West, college dropout, a shout out. You know, I love this album. This album really helped me through high school. Before we get into the video, rest in peace, MF Doom. Yes, this is a Doom documentary. Um. Let's get into it. Y'all be sure to listen to Atlanta Boy Soul for the Life. And yeah. Oh. <laughs> Did he click play, of course. Duh. Yo. MF Doom, nigga. Doom. Nigga, sound like he a constipate. To MF Doom, totally. Very, my mom, actually. But not on purpose. She had a. She went to this pub called, I think, the Milk Bar. And then she went. She gave me the playlist that was of the music that was playing there. And I just noticed there was. Just loads of songs by this artist, Danger Doom, because it wasn't like Doom himself, it was one of his alter egos uh, when his collab projects. And I was like, this artist is just odd, just strange. I found out about him because my brother was listening to him and I thought that my brother was like really he's cool. Nice. No, he's not actually that cool, but I thought he was really cool. Um, so I started listening to him and I was like, whoa, his music's actually pretty good. I was just chilling it with my friends. I actually remember exactly where I was. Mm. We were in, like we were at Kings Park in Jamaica, Queens, and one of my friends was uh, just just played a uh, Figaro on his speaker. And I wasn't really into hip hop at that time, but I Shazammed it anyways, and it was like in my Shazam list for like several months. And one day I was going through it, and I just saw like the Mad Villainy album cover. I was like really intrigued by it, and this was when I was like getting into hip hop. Actually, rap, a cool dude. And I just remember seeing the album cover. Oh, and cool being, person. Like, really I intrigued cool by person. it. Uh, well, I think for me personally, he hasn't like necessarily been an artist that I've gone to like a lot. I react to their videos all the like, time. Like, last two years kind of thing mm. but i think like from that i've listened to him quite a lot that is the illinois he's become more impact flag by the way since then. i think for me it was like oh shit i've forgotten the question <laughs> now <laughs> <laughs> mf dooms he's not he's been there a lot for me um, <laughs> personally, personally personally he's been he's there for me right there. um but also, like, he's been, uh, like Dora, I haven't really known him for too long. I'd say probably around the same, like, two years. I think it was, like, it was lockdown, the first one. Yeah. When it was a proper, like, deep dive. <laughs> Not deep dive, but, like, that's when we started exploring them. Mm. Yeah, I think it was, the first song I heard was Crosshairs. And I was just, I was immediately, like, I didn't, I didn't love it at first. I was just like, okay, this is something very different to what I normally listen to, but still in line with it. Like, it seems like it was something I would like, but it didn't quite click yet. And then like a few months after that, I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw, uh, what did I see? You know those highlighted videos talking mm. about rhymes and it was talking about the rhyme scheme on That's That. Yep. And I remember seeing just every single word highlighted, with every single word rhyming with another word and being just so just impressed with just the sheer just like creativity of that. Cause I've not, I listened. To, I hadn't listened to like a lot of lyrical hip hop before that. Mm. I was mainly mm -hmm. uh, instrumental rap, instrumental hip hop kind of guy before that. So when I heard this, I was just like, "This is what rap should be." It should. You know I mean, that was what I was like. Oh, this is what I want to listen to for the rest of my life. This is the type of music I want to be exploring. Yo, that rap snitches shit on the Doom album. Yeah, that's easily one of the greatest shits ever. Rap snitches. Telling, Telling all your business. She ain't caught, caught NBA, NBA on Star Witness. witness. <laughs> Do you see the perpetrator? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm right here. For the rap. <laughs> the whole label set up for years. There's actually, I'm sure a lot of people have seen the video of Most Deaf, like, geeking out over Doom. Like, yeah. he mentions, like, how he, like, just stared at the album cover. Like, dude, I swear to God, when I got that, when I saw that Mad Villain record, I bought it on vinyl. I didn't even have a record player. I bought it on vinyl just to stare at the album. And I stared at it and I just kept going, I understand. <laughs> I was like, I get, I understand, I understand. And I kind of get what he means by that. Cause like, I was very intrigued as well by the album cover. And I think that's what really like sucked me in. And like, that's how I first discovered Doom. I have like such a specific memory of like walking to school on like one of the first days of Brit listening to Doomsday. Oh, being, that's like, cute. being like, oh, this is a good song. I'm gonna put this onto my playlist. What song was it? I think it was Dooms. I think it was Doomsday. Uh, yeah, I can't lie. Yeah. It is is definitely a good um, bopping tune. You know yeah. the one, them ones where where you're walking, 
and like the sun is shining. It's like yeah. s the start of spring, and then you're like, hmm, hmm. slap on some some I operation had doomsday. doomsday. I had that as well with rap and shit. They, they don't seem like they really into doom. I don't know about them. Spring, and we were coming. I, I don't know. As well, mm. I was like. This is a bit of a throwback. <laughs> it was my freeing it was, song. It was freeing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the beat of that's that is crazy. The, the, all the lyrical stuff he's doing is ridiculous, and I was just I was stuck at that very point. That was when I was like, yeah, this is the artist I love. Well, I think he. I mean, there's the like quote that's like, "Who's your favorite rapper's favorite rapper?" And so I think because of that, he feels very organic, like because he's like the original kind of. Well, not the original, but like. He's got a very iconic voice, and you can tell that it's Doom if he's on something. I've been getting into ra rapping a lot more recently, and obviously, from coming off of that's that, mm -hmm. I realize I realize that I really love the, in like having the intro rhymes in the middle of in the middle of bars, not just ending a rhyme with not just ending a line with a rhyme, but putting it in between everything you're saying. I just think it's quite. I think that specifically is something I've really got stuck with me, but then on top of that, it's just like. He would always talk about himself in like the third person, you know what I mean? He'd be like, uh, Doom rock grammar like the Kumbaya, you know what I mean? Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't say I rock grammar like the, Kum like the Kumbaya. He would say his own name or he would refer to himself as, oh, he does this. He wouldn't be like, oh, I do this. And I think that's quite an interesting way of going about it. Uh, that's definitely one way. Another way is just like, just writing nonsense. You know what I mean? Like, I could, you can tell from the things that Doom is saying, he doesn't take himself seriously. Mm. He's just very much like, oh, that's what I do. It's my rhymes I do. You're like, when you, when you write a whole song about how the person you're getting with has bad breath, you realize, you know what, you don't take, you don't care. <laughs> but you do care about how, what you're saying, how you sound, but you don't care about being the most smart person in the room or the, like, the most uh, intellectual person in the room. You just care about what you're doing, the music you're making. And that's how I think he's taken my writing to a higher level by just being so just himself in everything he does. I think, um, especially like his comic persona influenced my art a lot in even things like color combination and um, definitely like style as well. I got really into collaging like comics and then also like creating characters. He also like it's kind of finding humor with like also sort of really good kind of beats behind it as well and so it makes it, like for me he's made me want to go and find more instrumental things that aren't necessarily facts um, he makes you like, appreciate music classical music which is yeah honestly kind of the other side of instrumental music that I listen at least to that would do him do it for me and i think he has a lot of influence like in that kind of genre of kind of going down like Oof. jazz rap i feel like i've okay. kind of gone so what Doom did for me was he made me s s like seek out the art of storytelling, the art of being true to yourself. That's what MF Doom did for me personally. So I always, he always have my support. I always will care about MF Doom. He's a legend in my eyes. Point blank period, he is. a lot of jazz rap from him i mm. think doom like his production was just very like interesting in the way that he didn't really like when he did produce it was never anything like mind-boggling he just got he got a sample a drum break and he just put it together but it's mainly the samples he did use that were just wild like where you like him him using like in beef rap he uses just a sample from like a random spider-man snippet yeah my face it is hideous. And so, Victor Von Doom hid from the world, taking refuge with the mysterious order of monks. Beef rap can lead to getting teeth capped, or even a reef from armed dudes for some beef crap. I suggest to change the diet. It can lead to high blood pressure. Now that's crazy. Who does that? Mm. No one but Doom does that. You know yeah, I mean? Doom does that. <laughs> so... From that, I went, all right, how can I distinguish myself? Hmm. How can I have my own style? You know what I mean? Because Doom's style was, let me take random samples from what, the middle of nowhere. And I was like, okay, let me also try and do that, but in a very, in a different way. So like, I'm, I was scout on YouTube for hours looking for just some random saxophone solo from this guy with like two subscribers that I just seen like completely randomly. 
and it's stuff like that when I'm like, okay, that's how I, that's my style, that's my, that's what I do. He's influenced my relationship with music through just the way he puts himself out there, I can't lie. Mm -hmm. Like the, the personalities and the narratives he weaves through his music has made me sort of listen more. Cause I think I'm quite a casual music listener yeah. and I think yeah. you are too. So I think it's, it's very, he makes me want to go out and find other people like him. Yeah. And when you do find that, you'll be like, oh, I found this person cause I like MF Doom. It's like you know your youth. <laughs> it's like your YouTube recommended feed, isn't it? Mm, <laughs> yeah, basically. You listen to Doom and then you go yeah. find someone like I don't know Joey Badass or yeah. or um, Tribe, for example. I just think that anyone in any room could be an MF Doom fan because he's the kind of person where if you ask someone if they like him, no matter what they look like or who they are, you're probably not going to be surprised if they say yes. He's very versatile. I think being a Doom fan is the same as being a fan of literally anything else. In fact, I think it's uh, counterintuitive to try to like frame it as, you know, Doom fans are so unique or so intelligent. Because in reality, you know, you're just a regular artist. And I don't think it's helpful to like try to frame it as, uh, as anything else. Because it, it kind of makes it like harder for newcomers to want to get into Doom because people might be like, oh, you know, you have to be, you have to be this to be a Doom fan, when in reality, that's just like a really big disservice to Doom and his legacy, because we need new people to get into Doom for them to like carry it on into future generations. Mm, yeah. So I don't like framing it as like, oh, we do, honestly. Unique, they're so intelligent. And with all your artists who would know Doom, like all oh, your Tylers, your L Sweatshirts, your Moss Defs, your, your Freddie Gibbs and all of them, they would all be like, okay, here's this one guy who's just doing him. Let me just do me. You know what I mean? Especially with Tyler Crater and L Sweatshirt. Like, they, re they made their own music, innit? No one does music like L Sweatshirt and Tyler. They just do that. Hmm. And the reason they did that is because they saw Doom being able to do that. They saw Doom making and living his life however he pleased because he just made whatever he wanted. And then it just went from there. I don't know anything about the rap industry, but I guess uh, one thing that uh, that stands out to me is how Doom sort of finessed the record labels by offering the labels different pseudonyms that he worked under. So sure, one label might, you know, own the rights to, to Victor Vaughn's music, mm -hmm. but then Doom could turn around and put out music like under King Ghidorah, for example, and the record label has like no ownership of that like name. And yeah. He could go and do, you know, he know he basically builds characters. Food, for example. And the uh, record label one doesn't have claim over that because mm -hmm. he signed Victor Vaughn, not MF Doom. Mm -hmm. I think like <laughs> that was like super, super dope. Uh, other rappers have done similar things like um, Frank Ocean, ASAP Rocky. Yep. ASAP, and yeah. I don't think they were like inspired or like learned from MF Doom, but uh, Doom was like definitely one of the first people to like finesse the record labels mm -hmm. in such a way. Very smart, I think. I think it, the fact that he was anonymous draws a lot of different types of people in, because I think when you s when you hear music from a certain artist, you tend to associate the music with a face. But when you don't have a face to associate it with, it's a lot more easy to relate to it personally, and yeah. make it more about you and your own personal experiences than about the artists themselves. I think it's uh, distinguished them from other rappers of the time. You know, what other artist in the mid 2000s or the, the early 2000s was wearing a metal mask on stage? Most people were, they wanted their, their face to be recognized. But Doom, on the other hand, uh, you know, he thought outside of the box and he made the mask the symbol. To me, from the musical aspect, hip hop is one of the directions to where it's it's like a hundred or almost damn near a hundred percent on everything besides the music like what you look like the sound of your name yeah what you're wearing the brand of clothing mm -hmm. what, whatever you, intoxicants you choose to put in your body to you know things everything except for what the music sounds like so the mass is really a testament to yo it's not it, it's not about none of that it's straight about the wreck and I think that like you know really made him unique and distinguished him from other from other MCs at the time. I think that has uh, definitely you know made him stand out over the years. With me specifically, recently, in the way that I've been uploading my music and that, I very much separate myself from it. Like I'm not posting loads of pictures of myself being like, oh go listen to my music. I post mm -hmm. the music. I post maybe a, a song that inspired me, and then I leave it. 
I'm not trying to be the music. I want my music to be the music, you know what I mean? And that's what, that's what Doom was doing. That's why I put on the mask is he was like, okay, p too many people are having the music speak, are having them speak for the music instead of the music speaking for itself. So that's why Doom put on the mask. And that's why for me, I don't really present myself when I'm presenting my music. I just put my beats out there, hope someone likes my beat, some, hope someone likes my beats and then just leave it out there. If that works, for me, if that works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't think I need the validation of the, of the numbers in that. And that's what I feel Doom was as well, you know what I mean? Like, you see, I, he was just okay. Music he loved music. I believe this. I believe this so much. It's just, I want people to look at me. I want to be an icon when I die with my music. I want my music to be iconic. Personally. I get what my boy is saying right here, but oh my god, my bad. I didn't mean to call you a boy. I didn't mean like that. But, you know, my, my, um, my guy is saying right here, but it's like, I don't want to be anonymous. I don't have to be. I want people to see me, recognize me, give me my praise, give me my love, give me my flowers now. I don't want to die. And then people are like, yo, he's a legend. He's like, that's what happened. When he passed away, everybody was on him. But when he was alive, no one was never fucking with him. And they was, they was doing it behind the shadows. I didn't see a lot of artists posting um, MF Doom quotes or MF Doom stuff. A handful of artists did, don't get me wrong. A lot of artists liked them. A lot of artists tweeted lyrics or tweeted little sayings he might say. But other than that, they wasn't really showing him love. Be honest with you. Hell, I put MF Doom my whole fucking album one time. For his... In terms of what he would want to do for to that. numbers and that, releasing four albums in 2003 isn't the best way to be making many, like the most money you can. You know what I mean? He would spread out those releases, but because he was just wanting to release this music because he made it, he didn't need, he didn't want, he didn't end up doing it in the conventional way. That's just, and that's probably the way that I've taken it. That's probably what I've taken from his, from the way he did it. Mm. And he was born in the UK, but raised on Long Island. Yep. Tonight, the music world mourning the loss of legendary mm -hmm. rapper MF Doom. Like they know what's about to happen. Just keep your eye out like I, I, Captain. The public rarely saw his face, but they knew his voice. Daniel DeMille passed away at the age of 49. He was best known by his stage name, MF Doom, a famously mysterious masked rapper and producer who gained a cult following across the world. His wife confirmed his death yesterday, saying he passed away back on October 31st. Doom dying, I think it was, uh, I didn't like it which obviously sounds very mm -hmm. like cheap but whatever I, I i was very i wasn't shocked i'm accepting obviously of it. I, like he hasn't been putting out music for about five years unpopular opinion death is beautiful especially when you die and you leave something for your kids you leave something for the world that's a beautiful thing i'd be sad if doom passed away he didn't leave nothing for his kids. He didn't leave a mark on the music industry. He didn't do nothing besides be a menace to society. Then I'd be sad. I'm like, damn. But nah, he left a mark. His kids have wealth now. Hell, I know his one son passed away in the car accident, but still, um, not car, but he got, he, I ain't gonna go too deep in details, but I just know that he's in a better place. I know him of Doom is happy right now. He gets to see one of his sons again. That's how I think about it. I try to see the good in it, you know? That's just me personally. So I knew, like, not something was going on, but, like, his, my interest in him had gone down a bit, which is kind of sad to say. But then when I found out, because it was New Year's. It was New Year's. It was on New Year's that his wife posted on Instagram. And I remember that night we played, we found out and it was like 10 minutes before midnight. And then on the stroke of midnight, we played Rhymes Like Dimes yeah. at our like little session that we were having with our friends. Hmm. And like, that was quite emotional because we all knew the lyrics to it. 
And like, especially when he goes, mashed potatoes, applesauce. That was, I can't lie for some Buttery reason, that just biscuits. Really and I, like, and I get lost. Yes, 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 but yes, y'all. We don't stop. Friends, like, you know, sir, 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 sir. We need to commemorate him. And so we like linked up all of our Spotify's and so then we're playing it like, but with mute because otherwise <laughs> the technology is just not going to work out. And then like, there was this kind of, like one of my friends like sort of was like, no, this is too much, this is too much. And kind of like was all on the brink of tears. And yeah, it's just kind of the thing of, you re you don't realize how much like music can mean to you until you realize you're not gonna get any more music from someone. Mm. And then you're, you kind of have a new appreciation for them. But it's still that kind of like, oh my God, th this has actually happened. Mm -hmm. I think it was really interesting as well to see other people's reactions to it because mm. I feel like obviously when someone dies there's obviously like a lot of love that's shown to, to whoever, whoever it is but with with this it was it was I feel like it was more than that it was more than like the tweets mm. and like all oh, the rips on like people's snapchat stories and stuff like that it was more like people wanted to show their appreciation and what he'd done for them so like i saw loads of fan edits and things like mm -hmm. that on youtube and i feel like that and it was beautiful kinda, you know wholesomeness spread through like his the the way he made his music was just i feel like that was part of what he was trying to do you know i think it's it's already quite nostalgic even mm. for just a few years ago and i think um a lot of people um because obviously um like i said it's very broad is a very broad demographic so i think people of all ages listen to it and you can tell that people that used to listen to him are already listening to him in a nostalgic sense so i think it will sort of carry on to people's parents and then i think their children will probably um sort of discover it through their parents so i think it, yeah. it's, it's sort of like a time capsule i think it's quite yeah um Reminiscent. I really feel like he didn't have people that hated him in the music industry as well. No. Like he he probably did, but in the way that has so many people that I saw react to his death, it was very much a like we have literally lost such an incredible musician. This is like really sad. This is going to be remembered. Wearing the mask, he wasn't him. You weren't looking at Dumale. You were looking at Doom, and I think that kind of uncentering of self is what really like inspired all the people who did end up coming to him. You know what I mean? All the people who mm. like, what, your Bishop Neary's and that. When they're listening to Doom, they're like, oh, it's just some entity. It's not Dumale. It's not, it's not any of the people before him or after him. It's just, it's just him in that very moment. It's just the music in that very, very moment when you're listening to it. And that's the only thing that's there. You don't got the context. You don't got, you don't got the personality behind it. You got just the music. And that's what I think is such an incredible way is why Doom was such an incredible creator. It's, inc it's ridiculous. I am Doom on, um, what you call it? This is from Cartoon Network Adult Swim back in the day when I was little. That that whole thing. Um, that being said, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Real talk. Uh... It, it's sad, honestly. It's sad. It's so really good. Sad. It's, it's really sad, you know. MF Doom was a legend. Let me know what MF Doom meant to y'all in the comments below. Stay tuned to the next video. Much love. Rest in peace, MF Doom, to me. Yo. I would say MF Doom changed how I make music for the rest of my life. And. Without MF Doom, I wouldn't have the sound I'm trying to go or try to move towards now. So, wherever you are, Doom or MF Doom, I hope that you're proud of me and I hope that you're proud of all your musicians, all the artists we got out here that got inspiration from you. Y'all stay safe. Peace. Sorry,